The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Coming up on Harvest, it was the power of prayer that rescued Bill Ballinger from a life of drugs. The founder of Break the Grave talks about his efforts to spread hope in schools across the country. And how do we activate the healing power of Jesus Christ in our lives? Pastor Mark Lance provides answers to questions about divine healing. Plus, we want to know your thoughts. Hit us up on Facebook and Twitter and send your emails directly to the set of Harvest at live at lacy.com. World News begins right now. Now on this Tuesday, April 4th, 2017, here's what's happening in your world. A suspected chemical attack in a town in Syria's northern Idlib province has killed 58 people today, including 11 children. Syrian activists described the attack as among the worst in the country's six-year civil war. It is the third claim of a chemical attack in just over a week in Syria. Opposition forces claim the attack was caused by an airstrike carried out either by the Syrian government or Russian warplanes. There's no comment from the government in Damascus. 14 people are now dead after a bomb blast Monday that tore through a subway train in St. Petersburg, Russia. 49 people are still hospitalized. Video released today shows passengers trapped inside the stationary train, frantically screaming for help while others escape through broken windows and doors. The intelligence agency in the former Soviet Republic of Kyrgyzstan says the man behind the bombing is a Kyrgyz-born Russian citizen. A power outage still plagues Colombia's southwest city of Makoa following a massive mudslide. Saturday's disaster was sparked by heavy rains that raised water levels in three rivers, unleashing a torrent of mud. The death toll has risen to 262, including 43 children. Damaged power supply equipment still leaves Makoa and surrounding towns in darkness, except for some electricity from small generators. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro sharply criticized the Organization of American States today, claiming it intends to become an inquisition that persecutes Venezuela. Member countries of the 34-nation regional bloc said last week's Venezuelan Supreme Court ruling nullifying the opposition-controlled Congress was incompatible with democratic practice. That Venezuelan court ruling was overturned after three days following strong international and domestic criticism. Opposition leaders say judges have to be removed to restore constitutional order in Venezuela. And a Mississippi woman who desperately tried to direct rescuers to her sinking vehicle after it skidded into a rain-swollen creek is among five people killed in storms across the South Monday. Two other people died earlier in Louisiana. A man died Monday in South Carolina after storms swept through that state. Cars were stuck on flooded streets in Birmingham. Powerful winds brought down a number of trees in Columbus, Georgia. Another possible severe weather outbreak is in the forecast for the southeast on Wednesday. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance has today's connections. But up next, Bill Ballinger brings us a message of positive character development and integrity to a new generation. That's next here on Harvest. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the C Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the C Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. 
Bill Ballinger, founder of Break the Gray Event, has dedicated his life to being a catalyst for change in the lives of young people. His events focus on issues such as substance abuse, suicide, cutting, bullying, peer pressure, and inner beauty among high school students and middle school students. He joins us with his fascinating story, and you indeed have a fascinating story. Pleasure Welcome to, to the Harvest Show, Bill. I'm so glad to be here Okay, so today. it seems like everybody here knows about you and knows about the work you've done that makes you either notorious or infamous, I mean, <laughs> for the Lord. I mean, share your backstory, and then we'll talk about Break the Great yeah, event. Yeah, well, it's, uh, God has been really good and gracious to me, and uh, my wife especially, both of us. Our house was raided by a SWAT team, 19, 18 years old. And uh, our daughter was taken away. Just a lot of bad choices as teenagers. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting about our story is we met in reform school. So <laughs> then we get out, we get released, we do well, we graduate from there, and then we made some more bad choices again. Mm -hmm. uh, and got married really, really young, and then our daughter was born, and then not even a year and a half later, house was being raided by a SWAT team. And a SWAT they, team. Yeah. Fully dressed in black from head to toe, black ski mask, black toe gauge pump, shotguns, and... Yeah, it's it's a that that story is very interesting. It, they took my daughter away that day. She was nine months old. But I had a flow of known felons in and out of the house. A lot of dangerous people. And what's interesting about it is I, I people think that I lived like that all my life, or I was raised like that. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I always I always say I didn't get to be bad for very long before I got caught. You know. Right. So, and thankfully, I did. Uh, but about eight months later, my wife was sent, sentenced to six years in Indiana prison, and I was sentenced as well. And uh, people usually ask, well, what for? Man, six years, you know, probably first offense as an adult. And it was, but the problem was is that we just wouldn't cooperate. We just had that, you know, that street attitude. Mm -hmm. and we were going to protect our reputation and we wouldn't cooperate. But it was there that God reached out to you in the Indiana oh, man. collection yes. he facility? Did. He did. Mm -hmm. I had the most amazing. God just sent people to me. When I first got to prison, some Christians came and, you know, they, thank God for the Christians that will do prison ministry, but they brought me a Bible. And they said, you know, they said, God wants to restore you and your wife. And I'm thinking, that didn't sound right to me. It doesn't, because I, I know he wants to do good things for you, but I thought, don't I need to pay my price to society mm -hmm. and obey the laws of the land? They said, well, did you ask him to forgive you? And I was like, yes, I did. They said, okay, now let's start working on this. So they'd give me scriptures to study about getting, you know, how God would answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. So I spent the majority of my time in prison buried in my Bible. Mm -hmm. building my faith and would send my wife letters to her prison and encouraging her. But one of the most interesting things was one of the prisons that I was sent to was the Indiana State Prison at Michigan City. Now I'm in their first offense as an adult, receiving stolen property. So there was no, no yes, violent crime, but there was no beds open in any of the other Indiana prisons at that time. So they send me to Indiana State Prison in Michigan City. I'm inside the walls for a couple of days and then they put me out in this uh, place at that time called K-Dorm. It's now called Lakeside. And there were some lifers out there that were serving their time out. And one gentleman, six foot five, black brother named Robert Nelson, they called him Slim. He used to be the baddest dude in the whole prison, but he became a born again Christian. And I asked about Bible study. They sent me to Slim and he took me under his wing from the get go wow. and began to teach me about the Lord. I'm talking powerful things like how God would answer prayers. And one of the very first thing that we prayed was, is I want to be able to write my wife letters. The prison wouldn't okay it. And Slim said, we're going to fast. I was like, you mean don't eat? <laughs> you know, so we fasted three meals, and that day I got my first letter from my wife that prison had released the letters to come through. And you said that you learned about the Bible, you learned to fast and pray, and God was using that. That was really your preparation time yeah. for what you're doing even yes. now today. Yes. So talk about the Break the Gray. That's the name yes. of it. Where does that name even come from? Well, first of all, I would just say this, that that, that took place about, uh, I would say, 14 years after our prison release that we finally okay, started so Break the Gray. Okay, so there was a lot of... When we were released from prison, it was a miraculous thing. Okay, we stood on the word. God changed the judge's heart, and she let us out of prison on the same day, one year what? early, one year <laughs> early. And we were granted full custody of our daughter back with no strings attached. Yeah. I, I'm just like blown away yeah. just to even hear that. I never heard the end of the story, so my yeah. reaction is genuine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so God restored your marriage. He did. Gave yeah. you your child back. Less than two months after being released, granted full custody. The welfare never took her back again, and, and we just became model citizens, you know, doing our best, and mm -hmm. I got a job. Started serving wherever I could in the church, joined praise teams. I went to work for Prison Fellowship, Chuck Colson's ministry, started going back to prisons and speaking, and then started recording music. and Went full-time in the ministry in 2002. Then in 2005, I was on a road trip. I lived in Branson, Missouri at the time, and I was on the road, and I felt like the Lord spoke into my heart, and he said, take your story to the public schools. 
and invite them back and they will come. And I had to realize though that you can't share the gospel in the public school systems, but it's amazing, and we don't, but it's amazing to watch how the Lord still works in the public schools when we speak there. And, but you made a stop at Jim Baker. So tell me about the connection with Jim Baker. Well, I moved to Branson and uh, I had, I'd, I'd been on some other uh, other networks and uh, I really went over there and, and, and thought I would get on their network. And, and so the Lord really opened that door. And so I became a regular on that program and, and they really helped to get our story out and express that. And so we became good friends with Jim and Lori. And from there, so 14 years later, you end up doing Break the Great Events. Yes. What happened with that was, is when he said, take your story to the public schools and, and, and all that, I had a lot to learn, but we started. I mean, that fall was my first schools to ever speak in. And now we're approaching uh, just under 300,000 students now in the public schools, events and school assemblies opening up all over the place. And what happens is, is that some people think of, well, people want to know what kind of a Christian thing are you doing in the schools? And what I try to get people to understand is Jesus lives on the inside of me and our team and our crew. And when we walk on the school property, he's walking on the school property. So there's a lot of prayer. We go in and we do these assemblies during the day and we call it break the gray because I really felt like that there's this middle ground that, that people, whether it's the young or older generation, it's like anything goes anymore. There's no absolutes. That gray area, so that's why we call it break the gray because I'm after that. I believe that God called me to do, with his help, with his anointing, to stop that and open eyes. And so because he's on the inside, when we're doing performances, we do performing arts, music, speaking, videos, all kinds of different things, but we really don't sweep things under the rug. We can come in and talk to schools on what they want us to talk about in these days, it's pretty heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's everything from cutting to suicide. And so, you know, we'll talk about suicide is not an option. And beauty is a heartbeat. And don't harm beauty and don't you dare die. And so we're challenging these students with this. But I realize this is really cool. That wouldn't mean anything without God's presence on us. Mm -hmm. And that's why I try to encourage people all the time is that wherever your workplace is at, mine's on a gym floor in an auditorium in a school somewhere. If you just let God do his thing, he'll do it. And we're having students. I've got a book about that thick back in my hotel room of just stories throughout the years of students writing in and saying, I don't know what happened, but during that assembly, I've had a change. I don't want to cut anymore. I, I want to live now. It's interesting how God will even anoint, even though you cannot share the gospel from seven to, to, to from the, the time school starts yeah, to yeah. the moment it ends, yeah. but how God is still anointing your work for you to go into the schools. But then you invite them to a concert, mm -hmm. and that's when you're able to share the gospel. Yes, you can. Uh, if they come to our, they come to our concerts on their own free will, mm -hmm. and uh, the communities will pay for them to be able to come for free, which is awesome. We've got sponsors that step up in different cities, and uh, a sponsor one of our main sponsors in Michigan, and and. Uh, uh, the students come on their own free will and they come to a concert and we give them what, what we advertise as a concert. Uh, and then I have an opportunity to share the rest of my story in a setting like that. Uh, again, it's a great opportunity because they're there on their own free will and we get an opportunity to share about the true meaning of what kept me off drugs, what got me and my wife back together, what got our daughter restored to us. You so know. what's next for you, Bill? I mean, it, it, it's like you're taking the school system by storm and uh, God is opening doors for you in that area. What's next for you? You know, I've reached this place. It's such a place of peace. I mean, I'd be just fine if God just has us mm -hmm. stay within the school systems. I mean, you're talking nearly 100,000 of them in America. We just kicked off or just launched an elementary school program within the last two years. So we don't only do middle schools and high schools. We're in elementary schools now educating on social media, awareness, and, and, and protecting, helping the students understand that kind of a thing. So what's next for me? I just want to do God's will. And, and I don't know, there's something about, today I was at Plymouth High School for an hour with hundreds and hundreds of students. And you can sense God in the public school. So when people talk about what some lady did back in the 60s, you know, with getting right. prayer taken out, I just tell people, quit worrying about that. God is on the move. He's working in some of the teachers and he's working in some of the school for administrators sure. and the coaches. And, and, you know, I don't think it's all going down the tubes. Bill, this is your camera right in front of you. Would you look in that camera and just pray for people, pray for the students, for parents and yes. um, faculty and staff that God yes. would have his way in their lives? Yes. Right now, there may be some people out there just really, really broken and don't know what to do with the situation that their young people are in, or maybe there's a young person watching and they just don't know which way to turn. I just want to say a few things. Because of what God has done, that's a reason to live. And so I'm going to pray right now for you that he would reveal himself to you in such a way that you would know that it's not a good thing to die. It's great to live. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now that you'll minister to the people that are watching.
that you will strengthen them with might, God, by your spirit right now. Go through those airwaves, Lord God, and encourage them. I take authority over that spirit of suicide, over that, that defamation, Lord God, that, that destruction that is trying to destroy them and take their hope away. Jesus, you restore hope like nobody else can. Bring peace into the lives right now in Jesus' name for those that are watching. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, Bill, you, you go throughout um, the country yes. going to different schools and what have you. So if people want to connect with you yes. and invite you to their school, yes. they can do so. They sure can. Okay, so that uh, web address is breakthegray.com. Yes. So it's called breakthegray.com. If you cannot remember that, go to harvest-tv.com. We'll be right back in just a moment. When Dr. Lester Summerall founded Let's See Broadcasting decades ago to tell hurting people about Jesus, he knew they would need prayer. So he opened the International Prayer Line. Today, tens of thousands of callers a month receive life-changing prayer from our dedicated volunteers. But we need your help to expand the work of this vital ministry. Won't you consider partnering with Prayer Line with a monthly gift of $25? Your donation will help us reach the world. Call today. Do you long to visit the Holy Land, but don't want to travel alone? On a Lassie tour to Israel, you're not alone. Our team of professionals has more than 50 years experience bringing Christians together in the fascinating land of the Bible. You and your new friends will worship together as you sail the Sea of Galilee, break bread in the garden tomb, and get baptized in the Jordan River, just like Jesus and the disciples did more than 2,000 years ago. What better way to experience the sights and sounds of ancient Jerusalem than with other believers from around the world? To join us for a life-changing trip to Israel, November 8th through 17th, 2017, go online to lasseetours.com or call 1-800-685-3732. Tell the operator to send you a free information packet today. But seats are limited, so don't wait. Call now. Just one visit to the Holy Land and your faith will never be the same. All right, let's go to the Word of God together. We're going to turn to the Old Testament book of 2 Kings chapter 5. And today I feel like I want to build your faith. I want to build your confidence by looking at a man whose name is Naaman and give you some practical principles out of this text that I believe will lead you on the path to your healing. And when I say healing, I, I'm not just talking about physical healing. I believe there's people watching who need healing from a divorce. You need healing from broken relationships. Maybe you need healing from an addiction. Maybe you need healing from a mental or emotional illness where the enemy has attacked you. And today I've got the faith to believe that the power of God is able to reach you right where you are. Break through that pain that you have with the divine touch that only he can bring. So let's go to the word, verse 1 of chapter 5. The Bible said, Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. And he was honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor. But here's where you need to look at this. But he was a leper. The first thing I want to show you is this. You must clearly identify the problem. When you look at this man, Naaman was like the chairman of the joint chiefs of staff of his day. He was a military leader of one of the region's most powerful nations. He was in the prime of his career. But the scripture ends that verse with this phrase, but he was a leper. You know, that three-letter conjunction changes everything. Friend, no matter how well things may be going in maybe other areas of your life, if there's one area that is not where it should be, it can throw everything off for you. Now, granted, Naaman's leprosy was probably in its infant stage or in a mild form, and he was able to conceal it up to a point, but his disease was at the point where he could no longer conceal it. His clothing could no longer cover it up. I know so many times what we do is we try to conceal our pain. We try to cover it up. We overcompensate by going on a spending spree, buying things that we really don't need with money that we don't have, hoping that will compensate for the pain. Or maybe we overeat using food as a feel-good drug to minimize the emotional duress that we feel. 
We try to overachieve at work, spending more and more time at the office, hoping that if I can just shatter my numbers, then that some way is going to take away the pain. But the reality is, friend, you can only conceal the pain for so long. And the first thing you must do if you are on the path to healing is identify the area of your life where you need healing. Mark chapter 10, Jesus answered and he said to a man, he said, what wilt thou that I should do to you? And the blind man said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Did Jesus know what he needed? Of course he did. He knew that he needed to see. So why did he ask? I believe that Jesus wanted this man to directly acknowledge his need, call it by name. And friend, today, you don't have time for vague or ambiguous prayers. You've got to address your need. You need to call it by name. You need to address that spirit of infirmity, address that spirit of depression. Call it out and begin to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Acknowledge that need. And I believe that when you acknowledge your need to the Lord, the grace of God is going to begin to move on your behalf and you're going to experience that healing that only God can give. And again, we stand with you for that healing, my friend. We're here to pray all day with you. And right now, it's a special moment because Brian Bush is standing by with your prayer request in Jerusalem. Let's go and let's pray together. Brian? Well, hello, everybody. Yes, I am in Durban, South Africa still. And uh, it's been wonderful to be down here. And it is Tuesday. It's the day that we use to pray for prayer requests that have come in. And you know, friends, we want to take this opportunity while I'm here on the ground in this beautiful country at the tip of Africa, the southernmost region of the continent, to be able to pray for this fantastic country. You know, many people see Africa as the conservative guardians for the faith in the Anglican Church, in the Catholic Church, when perhaps some people say those uh, uniformed bodies are going in a more liberal direction. Well, the church here in Africa is, in a sense, safeguarding the more traditional position. But we want to pray. We want to pray for individuals who love Jesus here on this continent. So let's do so right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this privilege of being here in this place that has such a fantastic history a place of civilization, a place of conquering, a place of colonies, a place of internal strife. But Father, we pray that you would break through all these things of history and meet men and women and children right now where they are with the good news of the gospel that your son came into the world and died and rose again to give us an assurance that we would be with you for an eternity. I thank you for that gift, and I ask that it would be given from shore to shore here on this great continent of Africa. There is so much talent in this country. There are so many loving people in this country, and we want to see this country saved for you here in South Africa and the continent conquered for your kingdom. We pray for those in troubled spots that are affronted by Islam. We pray that your truth would shine forth. We ask all these things in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, if you have a prayer request, remember, you can send it in to Prayer Line at any time. See Prayer Line. Well, you just heard a powerful teaching by Pastor Mark Lance, and now it's time to ask Pastor Mark a question. And you do have a question for we us. We did. Yet. We had somebody send this in through Facebook, and the question is a big one. Mm -hmm. They wanted us to explain what is the difference between positional personal and progressive sanctification. Wow. So wow. we've got to just nail that real quickly <laughs> by telling you this. First of all, sanctification simply means to be set apart. That's all it means, set apart unto God. So positionally, I believe the moment you're saved is the moment you were sanctified. In fact, you're never going to be more sanctified or set apart 
than the moment they're saved. Because what the scripture said, he's been made to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So God sees us as righteous now. Progressively, as we grow in Christ, we begin to lay aside some things. We begin to separate ourselves unto God. We begin to separate ourselves from the world, drop some of the habits that we used to have. That's a progressive thing. It doesn't happen overnight. And that leads to the third, which is personal sanctification. Everybody's at a different stage. Everybody's at a different phase. And so really, we can't judge somebody just because they don't look or act, quote unquote, as spiritual as we think they should, because it's a personal walk of sanctification they have. And you know, Pastor Mark, sometimes we'll look at a person who comes to faith in Christ on one Sunday and then we see them out and about right. and they're not quite acting the way we think they should act. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous thing for us to do, to judge that. Absolutely, because you don't know what God's doing in their life and you don't know the struggles that they're having. There's some people, they get saved, there's some real strongholds that have been there for years. And those strongholds are not going to come down overnight. It's a progressive work of the Holy Spirit. And that gets back to what you were talking about in your teaching today. If we feel we have one of those strongholds in right. us, we have to identify it and call it out. Right? Call it out by name, address it, acknowledge it, don't hide it, don't conceal it, let God know what it is. That's right. And if you need help calling it out and, you know, just getting that off your chest, give us a call at Prayer Line. That number is 1-800-365-3732. Thanks for joining us here on Harvest. We'll see you again tomorrow. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.